In this video, I'm going to be showing how to make the least expensive but extremely functional dust cyclone. Specifically, I'm going to be using it for my sandblaster to remove the, the dust from inside the sandblaster. And you can use it with really anything that you need to extract dust from, whether it's woodworking, machining, whatever you need to do, it works great for extracting dust. So here are the things you're going to need. First, you're going to need the cyclone assembly itself. And this is a very inexpensive cyclone and it works really well, just as well as the more expensive units. It costs anywhere from $25 to $30 on Amazon or eBay. It comes with a gasket, a foam gasket, some hardware screws, which appear to be like stainless, um, and some couplers. But these couplers are for smaller vacuum hoses. We're going to be using a shop vac, which has a, about a two inch coupler. The shop vac has an end which is similar in size to this. So what I'm going to be using for the couplers is these two inch by two inch PVC couplers. It's made, it's a rubber coupler, but it's, it was made for two inch by two inch PVC pipes. This works really well. It's bigger than, than this right, right here, but when you tighten it down, it makes a airtight seal against there and it's flexible and then you can tighten down the end from your shop vac on there. Now you're also gonna need an extra hose from the shop vac. Currently you're gonna use your shop vac hose to go into here, and you're gonna need an extra shop vac hose to come from here to vacuum whatever you're trying to vacuum. The next thing you're gonna need are two buckets. Now why two buckets? Well the problem is that this creates enough vacuum. Oftentimes your shop vac will create so much vacuum that it will potato chip the bucket. So um, it'll just draw it in like a raisin. So the way to prevent the potato chipping of the bucket is to put one bucket inside the other and it creates a structure and it prevents it from collapsing on itself. So the final thing you're gonna need is a lid. And I'm showing you the easiest way to do this. I'm just using a regular lid for this, in this case from Home Depot, it's a leak tight brand and it has a rubber seal so you know it's airtight. Now this lid is flexible and you could use something to reinforce it, a circle to reinforce it, like a donut once you cut the hole out in the middle. But in this video I'm just going to show how to cut a hole in this lid and attach it straight onto the lid. It works. I've used it in other, for other vacuums and it works fine. It's a little flexible and stuff like that, but it works perfectly well. If you want something that's more rigid, go ahead, take the time, cut a, cut a donut out of wood or plastic that fits on top of here. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is cut a hole in this lid. And I'm going to use this gasket as a template because the inner diameter of the gasket is the perfect size hole that needs to be drilled. So I'm just going to set the gasket on the lid, draw a circle with a marker, and then cut that circle out. I'll go ahead and remove this little foam circles where the screws will pass through because then I can use that for the location for the screws. All right, center this on the bucket lid. Mark it with a permanent marker. Now I'm going to do the screw holes, location of the screw holes. Okay, that's our template for drilling out, drilling out the screw holes and drilling the center hole. To cut this larger hole, you can use a hole saw if you have the right size, or you can use a jigsaw. I'm just going to try a sharp knife to see because this covers plastic is pretty thin so okay the problem with this knife is it can't make the radius very easily. Maybe if I go like this without slipping I can so it's kind of tough with the knife. I have a hole started so I can use a jigsaw blade Alright, let's do a test fit. Perfect. We'll drill out the holes. Take these screws and we're gonna line up line up the gasket with the holes on the 
cyclone. I made the holes kind of tight just because I wanted them to be sort of tight on there. I'm realizing that maybe I made them a little too small. Okay, I'm gonna drill out a little bit bigger hole. That fits better. All right, I got some extra washers that fit these screws because I'm gonna use these larger washers on the, on the inside and then use these other washers on top here. That hole was a little bit out of the center, so just drill it out a little bit wider. These screws and nuts are eight millimeters, so you can use an eight millimeter socket to tighten one side and then I'll hold the other side with a wrench. In this case, a Nipix adjustable plier wrench and tighten that up. Okay, so you can see that with the, without any support underneath, the foam is squishing near the screws and kind of expanded in the center. In my experience, this still works. There's, it doesn't, doesn't affect the suction. You could also add some sealant, some silicone sealant if you want to. You know, a ring on the bottom would really help, like a reinforcement ring. I actually wish it came with some kind of reinforcement ring. That would uh, really help uh, uh, even that out, even out that surface. But this works, it's cheap, it's simple. You know, I have a bunch of these. Rather than spending a whole lot of time on each one, I just uh, make it quick like this and they work. So there we go, that's, that's pretty much it. We got the two buckets, two buckets, one inside of the other, and this lid with the hole cut in it. Snap that down. For the connection to the shop vac hose, which is gonna go on top here. You can see that the shop vac hose connector is about the same width as this one. So I'm gonna use this uh, two inch by two inch rubber coupler to go in between the two. Like that. So all we gotta do is tighten that up. That creates a solid lead tight airtight fit between the vacuum cleaner hose and the cyclone. For the, for the input portion, we do the same. We use another one of these couplers and tighten it up on the input and then I'm gonna stick, put the input hose of the vacuum cleaner on this other end. This is my PVC joint here. I'm gonna use a section of PVC so I don't know how to use a section of hose pipe here to connect between the sandblasting chamber and the cyclone going into the cyclones. It's gonna be a smooth connection too, less air resistance loss. You can see how, how nice those rubber couplers are. They allow some flexibility, but they're solid, they're quick and easy to use. Okay, here's our cyclone setup for the sand blaster. That was really easy, quick, and in my experience, this, these cyclones work really well. So we can run a HEPA filter inside of the shop vac to make sure that no fine dust gets through and the HEPA filter will stay clean for a very long time too. All right, so this is the finished setup with the sand blaster. So we have the sand blaster chamber and the exhaust port here going down this PVC tube into the 
inexpensive cyclone. And then here's the vacuum tube connected to the shop vac. And it creates a lot of vacuum. And this is uh, my dust deputy. This is my very first cyclone I ever, I ever got. And it works great. It's made of metal. It's a solid unit. And I use this primarily for uh, removing dust from the CNC when we're machining wood or or resin or plastics and stuff like that. So I use a I use a dust shoe, and this does a great job of removing. As long as we remember to fin to to empty this five gallon bucket, which I'm I'm gonna get a bigger bucket because of that, because this bucket fills up pretty fast, and then we don't empty it soon enough, and then it gets sucked into the vacuum cleaner. But but I do have a bag inside of this shop vac vacuum cleaner such that any accidents or mishaps that happen, like we forget to empty the cyclone or just any extra little dust that gets through, gets ca caught by the bag before getting, even getting into the HEPA filter. So it makes it really, really easy to clean up if we have uh, an issue, like we forget to empty this bucket. This bucket on the sandblaster should require very little maintenance because there's only minor dust coming out of the sandblaster and any, um, fine glass beads that need to be filtered out. So that shouldn't have to be emptied out that often. Here I'm gonna power it up and you'll see the gloves inflating from the vacuum. So it creates that much vacuum. Now even on this inlet here, you can see like the sides of the, the thing is about to cave in when I close, when I shut that off. So it's pulling a lot of vacuum even through the cyclone. So. so I can still work in here. And I've tested it sandblasting. It does a really good job of removing the dust. I, it just stays completely transparent in here. It does a better job than other sandblaster setups that I've used, professional ones I've used before.